The material that we're using here is going to be quarter inch. by four inch and we'll be using the horizontal bandsaw to cut it. Please make sure that you watch the video on how to use it or get trained by your instructor. It's a good idea to make sure that the machine is plugged in first. Raise the blade up using the handle. Insert our material like so. And if your material is long, I set up this roller stand to help support it. I'll leave it a little loose. Then we're going to lower the blade until it's just above the surface of the material. And then we're going to slide this in until the combination square just touches. Four inch setting. Retighten the clamp. Since you're making repeat cuts, this device, when set up to touch the material, can act as a repeat stop. We then set the speed control to the setting right at the arrow. You then complete your cut by hitting the on button. Coolant will flow and the saw will drop automatically. Have your four inch part. And then advance your part until it hits the stop again. That's usually a good idea to check your distance. Retighten the clamp and start the machine again. Another option for cutting your material is to use the abrasive chop saw. Uh, make sure that you watch this video to learn how to use the equipment safely. Work with your instructor in getting a demonstration so that you're clear to use the machine. 
you'll want to make sure that you're wearing proper protective gear so that includes uh, some kind of eye protection. In this case, we've got some uh, shop supplied goggles. You could be wearing safety glasses as well. Uh, on top of that, you're going to want to wear a face shield. It gets loud, so hearing protection. Um, you could use your plugs as well. And it throws off a lot of sparks, so you may want to wear one of these fire retardant uh, jackets uh, and a decent pair of um, flame resistant uh, leather gloves is a good idea as well. This process makes a good bit of dust, so you're going to want to turn on the metal shop dust collection system. So once again, I've got my combination square set over to four inches. Place my material in the saw and then guide over the material until it just lightly makes contact with the blade of my combo square with the saw blade. Then we're going to want to get the saw moving and ease it into the part. In this particular scenario, this is a new blade, and so I was able to make a cut all the way through this four inch material. However, you could see that if the blade was worn down, here's one that's worn down partially, I may not have been able to make a complete cut all the way through the part. So you might have had to either lay it flat, you can also adjust the clamp accordingly, because otherwise if the, if the blade is too small, it won't be able to cut all the way through. So I just barely was able to make it all the way through that four inch part with this blade, which is still has a good bit of meat on there. It's a 12 inch blade, it's a 14 inch saw. If uh, the blade is too worn down and you can't cut through it by reorienting your part, just uh, contact the shop technician and they'll get a new one uh, swapped out for you. That is, of course, if one is available. Another option for cutting your four inch uh, material is to use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel attached to it. This can also be a very dangerous sparky situation, so make sure you're cleared on using the angle grinder. Uh, you're going to want to definitely wear eye protection, face shield, it gets loud as well and it throws a lot of sparks, so you may want a light pair of gloves and uh, one of these cotton jackets. And to make our line a little easier to see, we'll use a little bit of layout fluid. You could use a, a Sharpie if you'd like, uh, but this will just give our scribe line something a little uh, more visible to show up. So I've got my combo square set to four inches still. Um, I'll take a little tick mark here and then slide it over to my mark and that should give me a line that I can now follow um, with the angle grinder. It's vitally important that you set up the angle grinder properly, um, so watch the angle grinder setup video. But I'm going to put a shim in the back there. We're going to place the wheel uh, along the groove uh, in that back shim, and then I'm going to put the this, uh, recessed side down in towards the wheel and tighten it. And you see that this doesn't spin around. I'm locking that arbor in place um, there. So there we are set up. Uh, notice that I've got the guard on this and it's going to throw a lot of sparks and so I'm going to have that um, set up so that I can cut um, in an orientation where the sparks aren't going to come uh, back at me and protect me and my hands. Always want to make sure that your work is securely clamped down to a work surface when you're using a cutoff wheel or any kind of angle grinder. Both of these cutting processes leave 
a pretty sharp and gnarly little burr on the end of your material. And uh, you can remove that a lot of different ways, but one of these little deburring tools uh, is pretty handy. Um, it makes pretty quick work and quiet work, thankfully, of light burrs in material. And you can just draw it in towards yourself and eliminate that sharp and rather dangerous edge that, that comes uh, from cutting. It doesn't take off heavy burrs uh, like that one there. I'll have to hit with a file, but um, makes pretty quick work out of it. So a little deburring tool. So the next thing you're going to do is check to see which edge is most square. And that one's pretty good. That one's not bad. That one is also pretty good. So buyer's choice, I'm going to go with this one, mark it so I can reference it. I'm going to first set my combo square to three quarters of an inch. Then we're going to mark along this surface. Then we're going to set this now to three and a quarter. And again, we're only marking, referencing, I should say, off of these two edges. And now you have a whole pattern that measures what we need for the assignment, which is two and a half inches by two and a half inches, all spacing. Now we're gonna use the center punch and the hammer. Make sure that we're working on a good solid surface. We would never want to do this on a machine surface. And then you're going to bring the point of the center punch right up to your mark and give it one firm whack. So again, that's bringing the point right to your mark, giving it one firm whack. And now we repeat for the other remaining holes. And now we're over here at the drill press. First, make sure your slots are good and clean. I want a stack of washers that is just a little above the material. And if we want to make our life a little easier, stack a few more on top. Two more nuts hold things down. And I want to make sure that my part won't spin or lift. And so this looks like this setup is going to work pretty well. I'm going to go with a uh, starter bit. You could use anything from an eighth inch, 
3 16 somewhere around there is usually a good starting point. Make sure it's a good sharp bit. Chuck key. Tighten on more than one hole. And we want to check to make sure that the table is centered and at a reasonable height for us to work. And that looks pretty good. So I'll lock it back down. And now you can see that I can bring that bit down. It won't spin because it'll touch there. We'll give that a little snugging. Just a little light pressure. You don't need to kill those. And um, when we like where all that looks, make sure that our table is locked back down. Table collar. And check that our speed is good. That looks pretty good. Belt settings say that I'm around 440 RPM. Using just a little bit of oil to keep the bit sharp. Just a little dab. What you need to do is come down lightly, clear the chips, and if you need a little more oil, this sharp bit goes through pretty quickly, and you see the advantages of this setup is I don't have to reclamp it each time. here first and I rotate my part in until I find that center punch mark and reapply oil as needed. swap out to our finished size bit. Give us plenty of room. I'm going to go all the way up to a 5 16 Ease down into the part. Make sure you have oil on your bit. And again, it's the same thing. Make sure you have contact there first. That way the part doesn't spin on you. Make sure your bit is well oiled. pretty darn fast. We have a test plate and if your part drops onto the test plate you pass and then you'll want to mark that with a T so that you have it as a template. If one of the holes or another one doesn't drop on, never force this onto the test plate. You don't want to ruin the test plate for your peers. Um, you just make that offending hole larger until it um, get a larger drill bit uh, or you could also use a file and file out the offending uh, hole whichever one it might be until it fits um, and drops over the test plate uh, like so. So you have one good plate. Now you have to make a few more with that same hole pattern, three more in particular. So what we're gonna do is line the two plates up and then we're gonna clamp them together. Nice and firm. And then we're gonna use a set of transfer punches. Now I know that I used a 5 16 
drill bit earlier. Transfer punch has a uh, diameter uh, the same as the drill bit you just used. And then what we're going to do is just one hit, use that hole as a guide. And then uh, don't lose these. you can see you now have four this is your primary one this is the one that you just transferred all of your markings over to and now you need to do it with your other plates Our larger drill bit. Put back in our smaller one and start drilling. Again, make contact here and a little bit of oil. Okay, so now you want to check to make sure all your plates fit over the test plate. And if they do, you're good. This one doesn't fit quite so snugly. Um, if we look, there's a little bit of here and here. Doesn't quite work out. So I'm going to use a file. on much more easily so 